Okay, so I'm just going to go over some thermodynamics. And I'm going to draw a little graph. And here we have the energy and the reaction coordinate is along here. So if we imagine, let's say, an exothermic reaction, I'll do it in red so you can think of heat and stuff like that, which is given out. Then we start off with the reactants at this level and they have to gain energy in order to react, which when they're at a peak up here, they isn't just as simple as they can carry on to wherever they want to go. They can actually fall backwards and start off where they begin, which is why in reactions you'll quite often see equilibrium steps because they can go both ways. And this is because when they're at the peak, it can go over the side. So anyway, we'll carry on. Let's say they do react successfully and then they drop in energy as they form the products. And if you draw dotted line across, what we'll notice is that there's an energy difference here. And that doesn't stay in the molecule, that goes out like that. That energy is given out in the form of an exothermic reaction. And so that energy given out is either heat, light, or sound. And if we take the opposite, which is where energy may need to be taken in, this is an endothermic reaction. So again, label the energy on this, this is still the reaction coordinate. And we'll do a sort of a cold blue, if you like. And so the reactants start off, again having to climb an energy barrier. Bit dangerous, could go back down, but let's say they carry on again. But they stop about here this time and form the products. And the products are higher in energy than the reactants. And if you draw dotted lines again, this energy isn't given out because it's gone up, which means had to put energy in somehow into this. And again, that can be in the form of heat, light or sound to get the product up to this high energy state.